Hi everyone, this is HM and S video number 25 and you are most welcome for it. Last video, HM and S video number 24, we introduced typing in Microsoft Word and we saw how we can set up our Microsoft Word document in a way that makes it very easy for us to type. In this video, we are going to do the real typing now. This is exactly what we are going to type. This is page 1 and this one is page 2. I believed when we are done typing this, we would have gone through most of the techniques that's used for typing in Microsoft Word. Let's switch on to it and we see the different techniques that's used for typing in Microsoft Word. Now, this is exactly where we left last video. So I'm going to click somewhere and do Control A to highlight the entire text and hit the delete key to delete it. We are going to start from a blank Word document the way you are seeing it. Now, before we even start typing, let me show you something on the keyboard. This is actually a standard keyboard. Now, this is the key which is called the cap locks on your keyboard. As you can see, it's indicated cap locks. When you are using a laptop also, you will also see it indicated cap locks, as you can see. Now, when you hit the cap locks key down, on your keyboard, when you are using a standard keyboard, it will show the green light on what is indicated air. As you can see, it's showing that green light. That means when you start typing, in a letter you are going to type, it's going to be in capital letters. I'm going to backspace, backspace. When you hit the cap locks again, and you are seeing the light is not there, that means the cap locks is not on. And whatever you're going to type is going to be in small letters. When you type anything, it will be in small letters. So I'm going to backspace, backspace. Now, when your cap lock is not on, and then you hold down the shift key, you type other letters when the shift key is held down, Whatever you're typing will be in capital letters. It will actually be the opposite of what we saw before. I'm going to backspace. And when the cap lock is on, and then you hold down the shift key, then you type in a letter, the letter you're typing will be in small letters. That one is actually very important for you to understand when you're typing in Microsoft Word. Now, for me, when I'm typing, and most of the people who have experience in typing, when you're typing, don't put your cap locks on. Put your cap locks off. And whatever letter you want to type in capital letters, you hold down the shift key and then you type that letter. It will now be in capital letters. This one being, most of the letters you're going to type will always not be in capital letters. When you want to type maybe the entire document in capital letters, that's when you can now put the cap locks on. Or when you're typing the entire sentence in capital letters, you can now put the cap locks on. Most of the time also, when you type a word, like for example, if I want to type Let's say I want to type Francis. When I hit space, Microsoft automatically correct for me the first letter if it's not in capital letters and it will put it in capital letters. That's one of the reasons why you don't want to have your capital letters on when you are typing. So let me backspace, backspace. Now, let me bring what we are going to type exactly on this Word document so that we can see exactly what we are going to type. So this is what we are going to type in this Word document. Now, as you can see, the first sentence you're seeing here is grayed out. That means it's actually sitting in the header area and it's actually not active. Microsoft, when you select the normal margin options, it always put for you margins all around your document area. On top here, to the left, to the right, and even down of 2.54 centimeters. Actually, let me show you what I'm talking about. When you come to the layout tab, this is margin. When you click on the margin, you can see this is actually a normal margin. When you select this one, you will have 2.5 centimeters all around from top left bottom and right let me get back to the home tab that means on top here we have 2.54 centimeters which is the margin then also in that margin that's where the header area is actually found so the first sentence you are seeing which is actually grayed out is actually sitting in the header area now when you come to the body of the document area as you can see you have this cursor. But when you move on top towards the margin and you reach the margin, the cursor changes into this I-beam. Now, when you see this cursor changes into the I-beam, that means you're already in the margin. And when you double-click on the margin, it activates for you the header and footer. That means on top here, you have the header area. You can type whatever you want to type in the header. When you scroll down, on the bottom here, you can also type whatever you want to type on the footer that is down there. The header and footer is actually activated. Now, once you have activated the header and footer, it always adds for you one tab that is called the contextual tab. As you can see, this is header and footer. 
Now a contextual tab is always an hidden tab that only appears when you want to do certain things. Like for example, right now we want to do head and footer. We activated the head and footer tab. That is a contextual tab. Later on, when you close the head and footer, it will again disappear. Also, very importantly, when you activate the head and footer, that means the rest of the document area is actually not active. That's why when you click on the header, you can type, you can see the iBeam cursor is blinking. That means the header is active and you can type on it. But when you click somewhere outside the header area, you can see you cannot have that iBeam and you cannot type on it. So let's type what we want to type on the header. It is HM and S24 typing in Microsoft Word. That's what we are going to type on the header. And that's what is sitting on the header. I've not activated my cap lock, so I'm going to hold down the shift key. Type HM and S. And then remove my hands from the shift. Space. 24. Space. And then hold down the shift key. T. Remove my hands. Then typing in Microsoft Word. Now, when you are typing and you misspell a word, don't always struggle to come and correct it immediately. You first finish the sentence, then you come and correct it later on after finishing the sentence. Reason being, Microsoft will always identify those English words that is not correctly spelled and it will underline them using a red line, as you can see. We wanted to type Microsoft here, but we misspelled it. That's why it highlighted using the red line. When you are seeing this iBeam, you can come with it. And when you are within the text that is underlined with red, you can right click. Microsoft will actually list for you the words that it thinks you want to type. As you can see, we have very many words here. If it's not an English word, but you are sure you typed it correctly, you can simply ignore old. Or you can also add it into the dictionary. So that next time when you type the word, Microsoft will now know it and it will not underline it. But for our case, we don't want all this and what we wanted to type was Microsoft. So I'm going to click on Microsoft and it will automatically correct that one for us. As you can see, this is what we want to have in the header. Now I'm going to close the header and footer. You click close. And once you do that, the header and footer will now be inactive. And it will activate for you now the body of the document area. So you can now type on the body of the document area. But the header and footer is actually inactive. You cannot now type on it. Then also you can see the contextual tab that we had. The header and footer tab has disappeared after we close the header and footer. Now we are going to start typing the rest of the document. The next sentence is Elder Fonts Microsoft and Statistics YouTube channel, which is all written in capital letters. Since the whole sentence is written in capital letters, I'm going to put my cap locks on. And then I type that sentence now. So it's it's Ildefons, Microsoft, and, and Statistics YouTube channel. Now after I'm done typing that one, I'm going to close my cap locks. Now I want to show you how you can highlight your sentence. There are actually a number of ways you can highlight. I'm going to demonstrate the rest later on. But for now, let me show you one good way of highlighting. When you want to highlight the entire sentence, you can come to the margin, as I told you, the margin is always 2.54 centimeters from the edge of your document area all around. So when you come to the margin, you will see the cursor will change to this type of cursor you're seeing here. So when you click once, it will highlight for you that entire sentence, as you can see. Also, when you come towards the area you want to highlight, you see this eye beam, you can click and then you drag through the entire area you want to highlight. And you can see it's highlighted also you can click within any word in that sentence when you double click it will highlight for you that word when you triple click it will highlight for you the entire sentence now i've highlighted that one because as you can see our text slanted a little bit that one is called italic and it's also bolded so when you come to the home tab you can see from the phone group we have b this b is for bolding when you click on it you can see it has bolded our sentence. I'm going to control Z to undo that. The keyboard shortcut to bold is control B. As you can see, it's bolded now. The next to it is I, which is slanted like the way our sentence is slanted. That one is what's called italic. As you can see, when you click on it, our text is slanted a little bit. I'm going to control Z again. The keyboard shortcut for italic is control I as you can see. 
Let's get back again to the header. I'm going to go to the header area. Double click. You can see it's activated. I'm going to highlight what we type there or I'm going to go to the margin. Click to highlight and then come to the home tab. Click on B to bold. Now I'm going to come to the header and footer and then close header and footer to come back to type. Come to the end of your sentence. Now when you hit enter, it will create for you a new line. But in that new line, you need to be very careful. It will always remember the format you have put before. So when we are to start typing anything from now, as you can see, it's also in italic and bolded. So you need to be very careful. From the new line, we don't want it to be in italic and bolded. So we are first going back to the home tab, font group, and then you remove the italic, then also remove the bold. As you can see so you can now start typing now the first t from the next sentence is sitting in two lines that is what is called a drop cap we shall see that one later on it's always advisable to do a drop cap when you are done typing so let's first type this one normally i'm going to hold down the shift key type the t then the rest i'm going to type them when i'm not holding down the shift key the above Now I'm going to hit enter to create a new line and type this R, uh, then you put a semicolon. Now I'm going to hit enter. Now when I type 1 and hit space, then Excel. Now I'm going to hit enter. After Excel, we are seeing Excel layout, then sort and filter. That one is somehow indented inside a little bit. So when I hit the top key, you can see it has gone a little bit in. Then you type A. Then you start typing. Now let me first get back. This is now where we are going to learn what is called the multi-level list. When you come to the home tab in the paragraph group, this is what is called the multi-level list. When you click on it, it gives you all these options here. Now the current list is this one here, which is showing for us from the preview. We are seeing one, two, and three levels. The first level is the level that starts from the left near the margin. That's a first level. Now, when you indent it a little bit inside, it will go to level two, which is indicated in alphabetical order here. The first level is indicated in numbers, one, two, three, like that. The second level is indicated in alphabetical order. That's when you indent it a bit inside. Again, when you indent it further inside the document area, you will go to third level, which is indicated in Roman numerals. That is if you're using the current list. You can also go to level 4, level 5, just like that. We shall see how you can add more level into your multi-level list later on. But that one is actually the current level. Now, if you don't want to use the current level, you also have these other options here. But let's go by the current level. So when I click on the current level, automatically it has put for us level 1, which is in numbers. So I'm going to put there Excel. And when I hit Enter, it's assuming I want to continue with level 1. That's why it's as automatically put for me two. But what I want, I want to go to level two now. So when you hit the tab key, it will now indent it a little bit inside and go to level two from the multi level list that we demonstrated before. Level two is indicated in alphabetical order. So I'm going to type Excel layout. Now when I hit enter, it's still assuming I want to continue with level two, which is true. I'm going to type sort and filter. When I hit enter, it's still assuming that I want to continue with level 2, but that's not what I want. I want to go to level 3 now. You hit tab again. Now, I want you to realize something here. Each and every time you want to go to the next level, you use the tab key. So I'm going to put sort ascending, enter. It's still assuming I want to continue with level 3. Then sort descending. Now, when I hit enter, this time around, I want to go back to level 1. So when I hit shift tab, it takes me back to level 2. When you are continuing with level 2, it will continue numbering it from where it stopped. But still, we don't want level 2. Again, you hit shift tab to go back to level 1. So I want you to realize something. When you hit tab, it will take you to the next level. When you hit shift tab, it will get back to the previous level. So this is level 1. Tab will take me to level 2. Tab will again take me to level 3, but shift tab will take me back to level 2, 
shift tab again will take me back to level one and when you go back to level one it will start numbering for you level one from where it ended on level one so the first level one was one now it's the next level one is going to be two so the next one is going to be word i'm going to speed up this one enter i'm going to level two tab type introduction to word enter then tab start screen enter backstage view enter shift tab ribbon enter tab then tabs enter now this time around i'm going up to level four as you can see level one is two which is word level two is the ribbon level three is the tab when i go to tab again it will take me again to level four level four is again indicated using numbers so i'm going to do groups enter commands enter now shift tab shift tab shift tab to get back to level one so i'm going to put there powerpoint enter i want to continue with level one then access as you remember very well last video we saved our work but again when you are typing you can keep on hitting control s to save your work now this video is becoming too long yet i don't want it to be too long so we are going to end this part here and we shall continue typing this page two from the next part of this short series of typing in microsoft word and then we shall finish up everything in this series so that is it for this particular video we still have more to come so if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe and if you found this video interesting give it a like and then you share it with your friends until next video hm and s video number 26 and then we meet again thank you